Hello and welcome to my channel. My name is Hannah and this is Jar of Fireflies. Here you'll find content all about my life as an Orthodox Jew, as a homeschooling mom of three, as the mother of a type one diabetic, just kind of whatever. It's my little corner of YouTube. So thank you so much for dropping by. All right, today, per your request, we will be baking gluten-free challah. I am so excited to share this recipe with you guys. It's all based off of a recipe that I found on the internet, but then I have changed it, modified it, basically made mistakes and tried to recreate what I did because it turned out better. Anyways, the recipe is different. I will link to the original recipe below just so you guys have that, but I'll also post my recipe below. Now, don't think you can get out of watching the video that easily. There's a lot of tips and tricks that I'm giving away in the video that you will definitely want to stay tuned for because otherwise your bread's just not going to turn out as good as it could and you don't want that, so. All right, before we get started, I just wanna let you guys know this would be a great time to go ahead and hit that subscribe button. It's a tiny little thing, but it helps me out a lot. So thank you so much to everyone who has already done that. I so greatly appreciate you. All right, so back to bread. This is a gluten-free challah. It is not made from a mix. It is made from just a bunch of ingredients that you will gather, and I'll go over those in just a second, and make yourself. It's delicious, it's amazing, and I can't wait to hear how your bread comes out. So be sure to let me know that in the comments below after you're done baking. Now, when I say that it's a gluten-free challah, I mean that you can wash on this bread, which is fantastic. Now, when I say wash on the bread, for those of you that don't know what that means, when Jews eat bread, we wash our hands in a ritual hand washing before we eat the bread. You can Google Jewish hand washing if you'd like to learn more about that or ask me in the comments below and I can explain it further there. But for the purposes of this video, we're focusing on actually baking the bread. But I wanna let you guys know that this is a pala that you can wash on, which is awesome. It also tastes so good that when my guests come over for Shabbat, they don't know that it's gluten-free. And they always ask, they're like, wait, this is gluten-free? Wait, what's in it? They're all like quizzing me to make sure that it's really okay, because it's that good, which is awesome, and I take as a huge compliment. So, all right, what you're gonna need to bake this bread? You're gonna have to gather a few ingredients. I usually have to go to a couple different stores, so sorry about that. A lot of the stuff is available on Amazon. I get most of the stuff at Sprouts, but it is available just all over, depending on what you have nearby. All right, oat flour. You need about two bags of this. Next up, xanthan gum. Just a little bit of this, not a lot. Tapioca flour, also sometimes called tapioca starch, same thing. Potato starch, yeast. I use this Fleischmann's brand from Sam's Club. Definitely the best deal that I can find eight eggs. You're also going to need sugar, water, honey, and canola oil. Now, as far as equipment goes, you're gonna to wanna to have some pans to actually cook the bread in. You're also going to want some measuring cups and some measuring spoons. You're going to want something to put your yeast in while it's proofing. It's gonna get big, so I use this eight cup mixing bowl from, I don't know, Pampered Chef a million years ago. You're also going to want, and this is super important folks, a scale. I do all of this by weight. Don't ask me anything about how many cups or tablespoons if I'm not already telling you because I do it all by weight. So I just have this great little handy dandy food scale and that's what I use for all my measuring. And last but not least, I use a KitchenAid mixer. You do not have to use a KitchenAid mixer. It just makes it a whole lot easier. All right, I use both the mixer attachment and the whisk attachment when I am baking my bread. All right, let's start throwing these ingredients together. To start with, add one cup of very warm water into whatever bowl you're using to mix your yeast in. Then add two tablespoons of sugar and stir that until the sugar is completely dissolved. Next, add four tablespoons of yeast and then go ahead and mix that until the yeast is as dissolved as you can get it. Now go ahead and set that aside so the yeast can proof. All right, gluten-free YouTubers, let's turn on the scale and get started measuring our dry ingredients. In your large mixing bowl, add two pounds and five ounces of gluten-free oat flour. Then add three and a half ounces of tapioca flour. Next up, half an ounce of xanthan gum. And finally, add one pound of potato starch. All right, folks, once you've got all your ingredients in the mixing bowl, it's time to go ahead and put it on the mixer. Now, so at this point, you are all done with your food scale and we haven't added sugar yet. Now, I use half a cup of sugar. I've never bothered to weigh exactly what that is because half a cup always works fine. So for this one, I do use a measuring cup. 
All right, so all of our dry ingredients are in here now and ready to go. I let this go on a low speed for about five minutes. I wanna make sure that these ingredients are very well mixed, that everything's nice and sifted, there's no clumps of anything anywhere, and that all the ingredients are very evenly distributed. This will make a much happier bread. I'm on setting number four right now, and so I'm just gonna let that go for about five minutes and clean up my workstation a little bit. All right, this has been going for about five minutes now, so I'm gonna go ahead and turn that off. Quiet. Okay, before we get started adding our other ingredients to this, I just wanna give you guys a quick pro tip. I keep all my bread ingredients in this handy dandy, kind of Tupperware, Rubbermaid-esque kind of container. I keep it right in the pantry. So now every time that I need to bake bread, I just have to pull out this one container and then a couple of other ingredients instead of trying to dig through the whole pantry for all of this like five or six different ingredients that I only use when I'm baking my challah. So this works really well for me. Maybe it'll work really well for you. Let me know in the comments if you've tried this trick and if it works well. Okay, back to the bread. At this point, we are done with our whisk attachments. As you can see, our yeast is proofing nicely. We're gonna wanna put that in sooner rather than later. Okay, the first thing I'm gonna do is go ahead and add four cups of water. After you've added your four cups of water, you're going to add one cup of canola oil and one cup of honey. Adding the oil before you add the honey makes it a lot easier for the honey to come out of that same measuring cup you had the oil in. Just a little trick. Next, you're going to add eight whole eggs to those other wet ingredients. Okay, now you've probably noticed by this point that my KitchenAid mixer bowl is super duper full. This is true, but there's also a lot of air down there with those dry ingredients. So once we start mixing, it will start to calm down a little bit. However, I do like to go ahead and grab this attachment for my KitchenAid mixer and mix it a little bit by hand before I start turning this on, just to get some of that air out. You can hear the air bubbles coming up. You can see the air bubbles coming up and it's gonna give me a lot more space up there at the top of my bowl so that things won't splash so much when we're working on mixing this all together. All right, got that attachment on and it's time to go ahead and get started. I'm gonna lift the bowl up and I'm gonna do this so, so slowly. I'm basically gonna sort of manually pulse the mixer. This is gonna allow for more air to come up out of there and give me more space while also slowly starting to get those wet and dry ingredients mixed together. All right, now I can let it go. And I'm gonna go ahead and keep that on the lowest setting. What I haven't shown you guys is that my yeast is like way going over this eight cup bowl. That's okay though, because I am gonna go ahead and now start slowly adding that in. If you've got a bigger mixer, go ahead and add it in with your wet ingredients. It's not a problem. It's just for me, I tend to save this one for the end because it is so bulky. Tedious? Yes. Are you welcome to try your own method? Absolutely. I don't have to do it this way. It's just kind of the way that ends up working for me and it's just what I do. But you can 100% add this yeast in faster. There's really no reason to add it in slowly other than that, I don't have the space in there. Okay, at this point, my wet ingredients are getting to be pretty well blended and there's a lot more space up there at the top for me to work with. So now I'm gonna go ahead and start pouring in this proof yeast. Okay, so now just like I did with the dry ingredients, I'm gonna let this mix for about five minutes also. I want this to be a perfectly smooth consistency with no lumps, no bumps, and everything blended beautifully. Okay, it's been about five minutes, so I'm gonna go ahead and turn this off. Okay. All right, now I'm just gonna kind of scrape off this attachment so that I can get all the dough that I possibly can. One thing to note, if you are separating your challah, yeah, now would be the time to do it. However, 
check with your local rabbi and find out if this is enough for you to separate on. With my family's tradition, yes, this is enough for me to separate. But if you're Ashkenaz, you're probably gonna need more flour. I think, I'm not totally sure. Check with your local Orthodox rabbi and get that answer taken care of for yourself before you separate. Now that this dough is all mixed up and looking perfect, I'm gonna go ahead and prep my pans by spraying them with just a little bit of pan spray. And then I'm gonna go ahead and put the batter into the pans. All right, you may think it's time to put that dough in the oven, but wait, it's not. We're gonna go ahead and set a timer here for 30 minutes and let that dough just set there and melt a little bit more, maybe rise a little bit, but just kind of sit there for 30 minutes. This is really important, folks, okay? Don't put it straight in the oven. Just let it sit there. Okay, so while we're waiting that 30 minutes for our bread to just sit there, I wanna talk a little bit about substitutions. Let's say you don't want eggs in your challah. No problem. I've used this Bob Red Mills egg replacer with zero problem and it still tastes good. And people can't tell the difference between when I make it with the egg replacer and when I make it with regular eggs. Another ingredient that you can substitute is the oil. Let's say you don't wanna use canola oil or you don't have any on hand, it's no problem to swap that out with some vegetable oil. I for sure use vegetable oil in this recipe. And again, you can't tell the difference. Okay, so I just heard my buzzer go off, so I went ahead and came back in here. The 30 minutes is up and the dough is looking great. I'm gonna go ahead and preheat my oven now to 350 degrees. It's not gonna hurt my bread to set out a couple of more minutes, but you are also welcome to go ahead and preheat your oven while you're waiting your 30 minutes. That's totally your call. Okay, as soon as that oven is done warming up, I'm gonna go ahead and put my bread pans into the oven. I put in four pans at once. You're welcome to put in however many that you would like. I don't recommend baking them all one at a time because I think that would end up taking too much time until you're ready to put in the next batch. All right, now it's time to put that bread in the oven. All right, I just set my timer for 40 minutes. Every oven is different and you may need to fiddle a little bit with that time on yours. I have found that the less I leave the bread in the oven, say for 30 minutes, it just gets a little bit golden brown on top and I find it to be the most delicious at this point, but it's kind of crumbly. I've also left it in a lot longer than that and it gets nice, beautiful brown color on the outside, the way that you would probably expect it to look, but I don't like the flavor as much that way. However, it holds together much better when slicing. That said, here's another pro tip. Serve this bread warm. Okay, so the oven just started beeping, so I'm gonna go ahead and grab that bread out of there. Look at that color. I am so excited to slice this open. to get two more loaves out of all of this bread dough here, which gives me a total of six pretty decently sized gluten-free loaves. And I'm pretty stoked about that. So now I'm gonna go ahead and put these two in the oven for their 40 minutes, and then I'm gonna be able to slice up some bread to go with my kids' dinner. kids are over here enjoying some delicious fresh baked challah with butter on it. And I've got a little bit left for me. So I just wanted to show you guys the finished loaf. So here is one of the finished loaves. They're delicious, a little bit crunchy on the outside and super soft on the inside. Just to show y'all the inside here from the one that we cut up. You see the bread's got a nice little squish to it. It's fluffy inside. It looks like real bread and it tastes like real bread. It smells delicious right now. 
All right, guys, thank you so much for tuning into this Bake With Me style video today. I hope that you enjoyed it. Please let me know in the comments what you thought of this. I've never done a cooking video before, so I would really appreciate your feedback. And absolutely let me know if you baked this bread and how it turned out for you. I can't wait to hear from you guys. So thank you again so much for tuning in. Be sure to hit that like button if you enjoyed this video and subscribe so you don't miss any of my future videos. Thanks again and have a great rest of your day. I'll see you in my next video.